we do see increasing numbers of uh, students interested in various aspects of uh, science and technology and engineering. Well, one thing is we need to be able to attract good young people to become teachers. We cannot predict the nature of the future and the nature of future jobs. So we have to provide the students the ability to be able to adapt and learn. So actually, uh, India is one of the few countries where at the 10 plus 2 level, engineering, medicine and science are preferred, preferred have been preferred subjects. So I think uh, there has been in India, there has been no dirt of students for STEM. Um, there was a gender issue in terms of percentage of women coming for STEM, but I think that is also being corrected now. We are seeing today in uh, IIT Delhi, the percentage of women increasing significantly, it's still not 50 percent, but we are, you know, we are looking at 26, 29 percent and, in, and we are taking steps to see that we can correct the gender imbalance in STEM. But uh, otherwise, uh, we, are, we do see uh, science and engineering as being science, engineering, medicine, all STEM uh, subjects are uh, really um, from the school level, students are interested in it. So I, uh, I don't see that as a problem. I'm not sure about the increasing demand, but we do see increasing numbers of uh, students interested in various aspects of uh, science and technology and engineering. And um, so that, you know, we do have growth and um, so we are also, you know, there, there are also many, met, uh, many initiatives where we are uh, investing in high-end uh, state-of-the-art equipment. And um, so we are upgrading our facilities, we are upgrading the experience. Um, so that is, uh, we have to create more of an excitement and that is something that we are working on. In India totally. So I think the first thing is uh, the infrastructure and the physical infrastructure, the laboratories, the research infrastructure and uh, this needs uh, higher investments and it has to be, we are fortunate in the IITs but I think the universities uh, and uh, we have a large number of higher, uh, higher um, education institutions all across the country. Uh, we need investments in the physical infrastructure uh, we need to see how to maintain this infrastructure. We need to have mechanisms to upgrade. We also need to attract better and larger number of quality faculty members. Again, we are reasonably fortunate that we are able to do that, but many places it is a, this is a problem. And uh, so we need to see that, you know, becoming a teacher is uh, a uh, a good career choice for young people and uh, currently that is not always the case. So, so that's another challenge. Students typically are uh, very much interested in computer science, artificial intelligence, um, uh, we are also seeing a lot of interest in mathematics and computing, uh, in the uh, sciences also. Uh, so there, it's a whole breadth of things, but uh, people also go by, uh, you know, what is the perception of what kind of uh, jobs and opportunities. Um, so we are fortunate that for all our courses, actually at the undergraduate level, we have a uh, large number of people people wishing to take that up and so we have a very high selectivity for all the courses.
I think so. Uh, I mean, we are doing a complete curriculum review at IIT Delhi and the government also is looking at ways in which we can do that. The point in this is that knowledge, technology inputs keeps changing. We cannot give any student the whole set of inputs. We have to give students the capability and the ability to learn so that they will be familiar with whatever is the whatever are the recent trends today and then as things change they would be able to learn and pick up. So that is the that is the kind of thing. We have a mechanism where even if different kinds of engineering that students are doing, engineering or science, but they will have the option of taking electives based on their choice. They have the option of taking minors and so they get you know data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, the if they are interested in nanotechnology and they, they are looking at quantum. So, we have centers of excellence in all these emerging areas. We have new courses that we offer, but the fact is that we cannot predict the nature of the future and the nature of future jobs. So, we have to provide the students the ability to be able to adapt and learn and that is the, the learning does not end when you leave the institute. But we have the, we have the ways, we have to, uh, to look at the problem, to look at the ways in which you get the solution and to pick up new things. We are, intru we have introduced a new MTech in robotics okay. uh, and uh, that is coming, that has been, uh, the admissions are coming in this year. Um, we have an MSc in Cognitive Science which is introduced a few years back. Uh, we have a Masters in AI and uh, we, uh, we have an interesting program, a postgraduate diploma uh, which is along with uh, NITI uh, which is a visionary leadership in manufacturing and there we are looking at creating the leaders of the future. Um, we have uh, programs in cyber security in almost in my, almost, almost all the domains and we of course have courses in and we are uh, looking at uh, we have a mechanism by which we introduce a new, new programs. So, you know the we are uh, we are part of almost all the government schemes we participate in them. We have made sure for instance all our high end equipment, uh, we have the central facilities uh, through the, uh, we have what is known as the central research facilities, we have the nano research facility, we have uh, an initiative which is from DST which is called Sathi where we create a health facility for analytical uh, equipment. So, we have all of this equipment is put in the public domain through the eye stem and uh, where others can also come and use this. Uh, and we specifically have a, um, an agreement with the Haryana government. Haryana government has given us, see we are, in, we are among all the initial IITs with the smallest in terms of footprint. We have only 320 acres at house cast. It is very nice, centrally located in Delhi, but we have a problem in space. So, we have been given two uh, last pieces of land of 50 acres each by the Haryana government and we are trying to also support the Haryana science and technology uh, ecosystem by training their researchers as well as their faculty members and we are trying to also put that. So, in our Sonipat campus which is one of them, we are, we are creating an earth atmospheric observatory, we are creating a drone research facility. And in Jhajjar, we are working with AIMS to create a new healthcare hub, IIT Delhi and AIMS to do that. It is just starting. So, you see, Sonipat is already functional, Money, uh, most of it is uh, already done, but uh, uh, some more developments are going on. We built on about 10 acres. Jhajjar is just starting, so another 3 to 4 years. So, the 
two parts of your question. The first part of the question is that why do we lack in research? Uh, historically, we've had an ecosystem where technology and IP and knowledge uh, is being imported. That's changing, but the ecosystem of academia and industry working together is being built up. And uh, if in the industry there is a premium given for people who have a master's or a PhD or a research degree and that becomes, that's recognized, then you would have more people going in for research. And that depends on the ecosystem of are you getting a competitive advantage based on research. So that's happening, happening slowly. We've had a history where it's, it's sort of, and uh, you know, it's a, there is a global competition in this. Uh, having said that, the overall research spend, which our country does from private and public, is significantly lower than what it should be for an e economy of our size. We are, of course, a poor country, but you ask why our research is not, it, it, it's a combination of factors. It's an ecosystem, it's an investment, and there is now, there is a recognition of this, and hopefully that will get Uh, got, got private sector also. In many countries, 75 uh, majority of the investment is from the private sector. Right. Here, our research funding is predominantly only government, right. and then the magnitude of that funding also needs to be raised right. significantly, order of magnitude raised. Because you see that this whole thing is about a long-term perspective. Right. If, if you have a long-term perspective, it is in our interest to together work together and make that ecosystem. There is a recognition of this, so I am optimistic. I am just, because you asked what are the reasons why this is not there, this is, but I am optimistic that we are moving in the right direction. Yes. So, I will tell you, we have a RNI research and innovation park which has been created where we are inviting industry to co-locate, to be here on our campus. Mm -hmm. They will have their staff, they will work with us, they will work on the multiple, it is not just on a project. So, that is that's a research and innovation park which we have built and the president inaugurated it, it is just starting off. We have uh, a large number of high-end uh, characterization and fabrication facilities that we, whether it is on microscopy, whether it is on, so that that's about, and that I told you central research facility, the nano research facility, and then the Sathri. All of this is coming up, some of it on our campus here, some of it is in Sonipat. Uh, so these are our, our additional. We are going for a high end computing specifically for AI. And that's going to be on the Sonipat campus. Okay. So with CVAC, that is uh, that's another thing that is. Uh, yeah. Now we are trying to see. We have uh, many things where we are looking at our innovation ecosystem, and we have uh, Birac, which is in the biotech area. We have uh, in the clean energy area. We have we are trying to create an ecosystem where we can catalyze and have our researchers run with their ideas and come with companies. We are also enlarging it so that other people, we want to see that we catalyze an innovation, a startup ecosystem in the NCR region. Right. Uh, we made some steps in this direction, lots more to do. <laughs> That's a difficult question. Uh, I, I think, well, one thing is we need to be able to attract good young people to become teachers. And I don't know how, but I mean, it's the entire sort of, it's the entire incentive structure, the benefits as well as the attractiveness of that sector. The, 
second is we have to find ways to excite young students. Today's Insta and Twitter generation do not have the patience to. Uh, so we need to figure that out. And I think um, that is, that's a challenge for higher education institutions all over the world. It's not just we are facing that. We have to be able to excite. We have to be able to create some things. We have to have a connect with reality, with society. We have to see that educational institutions are connected and are solving real problems. Right. If we do that, we can. So. I think um, school level is okay. I mean, it has to happen at the higher education institution level. So if we can do that, that will also contribute to the excitement. So the connect is so lots to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I go to the first year class uh, thing and ask them how many of you want to be teachers. Very few hands come up. Why do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. See, this, these are societal choices. What is it that is exciting which, you know, you will focus on the person and the package and when you have this, even in media, when you talk about it, you will talk about the crores and millions which someone gets in some, so it, it reflects societal choices and societal perceptions. It's a tricky thing, but you know, there's a excitement of working with young people and so we have to be able to. Uh, we do have still many are coming, but I think we, you talked about in the, as a country level, mm. there's a shortage of teachers, yeah. Yeah. shortage of motivated teachers, and, and that that needs to that, that's that's a societal problem. I don't have the solutions to that. Yeah.